it's a very cold, windy day outside. So I'm going to take advantage of the cozy, cozy shop and put this machine back together, hopefully today. Um, when I strip them and paint them, I have to be super, super careful that there is absolutely no grease or oil anywhere on the machine. And so the first thing I have already done is I just coated her insides with a combination of penetrating oil, sewing machine oil, and everything so that her main shaft is moving freely and everything. So I think that we're ready to go. But that is the first thing, just because... You know, I don't want any oil when I'm painting or else the paint won't stick. So I think what I'm going to start with is the bottom side here. So let me go ahead and get her situated. Okay, so kind of working backwards, I am going to reconnect my fork and stitch length regulator system here first. I need to do a quick polish on some of these parts. Like I told you before, I do my main cleaning first, and then just before I install them, then I'll do my final polish because sometimes they get a little messy, you know, in between steps, and I just don't want to have to polish them twice. Okay, so um, I just wanted to explain my philosophy before I get started. I'm not going to make everything super shiny, but what I try to make sure is that the parts that are going to have, you know, a metal on metal moving surface, so like the inside of this fork, the inside of this block, <clears throat> most of this, honestly, because that needs to be pretty from the outside, and this is metal on metal right here, and then the little bearing, and on here, the shoulder of this part, you know. I want all of that to be as clean as possible. The other parts, like this, that's never going to be seen. That's fine the way it is. But this little post here, I'm going to polish up because that's what this bearing is going to be spinning on. So that's how it's going to work. All right, so the way that it works is this is going to go up onto the main shaft. This part of the block, I put that bearing on this post already. This part of the block is going to slide over it like so. And this screw from the outside, there's a little hole right underneath the balance wheel. That's what this goes through with its washer, okay? And this little slot there is going to be going over this nub on the block, and when you screw it in and out, that moves the block up and down, which moves the fork, which changes the stitch length. I'm showing you that now because when I go to put it in inside the machine, you can't see anything inside of there, you know? Um, I have to kind of tip it up on its side and look through a peephole to do it. So explaining it this way, I think will make more sense. Okay, so I am just putting my fork straight up. If you can see through that little peephole and it's over the right spot um, on the main shaft up here that's going through. If you get a little magnet on a stick, <clears throat> excuse me, that makes life easier. And I'm going to try my very best to get it in here, but I think I'm going to have to place it like this and very carefully send it, you know, get it on there, send it back up through, and then use my magnet to orient it, or my little pick, once I have it in here. Like I said, it's kind of a touchy business. Now, this hole here and this hole in my block are going to have to align because that's what this screw is going to go through. So give me a minute to get all of this set up. Okay, I got it aligned. It's between the this little screw here. Once you get the block all aligned with it, I use my pick just to make sure that that little threaded part of the block is in line with the hole here. And then screw it in. Now. What I have found is that if you crank this really, really hard, this stitch length screw can get kind of bound up. It depends on the individual machine. Some machines bind up more than others. I don't know if it has to do with the casting or what. I don't know. But what I can tell you is if you've tightened this really hard at this point and you can't move your stitch length knob in and out easily, try cranking it back just a little bit until you can. 
Okay, that's, that's what I have found, but I crank it as hard as I can and still have easy movement right here. And so let me just get that set. And actually with this one, it looks like I can turn it all the way. Some I can't. Actually, I'm gonna back it off about an eighth of an inch. Okay, so now that that is down here, I can go ahead and get started putting um, my other shafts on. Okay, so I have this big shaft here. This bearing, remember I did not take this off, but there's a little slot here that this bearing is gonna slide into. So I'm gonna place it in there and then get the ends aligned so that I can put the pivot points back in place just to get it so it's gonna hold in place for me for a minute. Now I'm just getting this set in. Um, when I get my feed dogs in and everything, I'll do a final adjustment because if my feed dogs are too far over one way or the other, this whole shaft is gonna to need to move and you just do that by you know, letting in one pivot point side and letting out the other. But for right now, I'm just gonna leave it in place. So down here on this end, I have this big shouldered nut in, or screw, and you can see that it's not centered, you know? It's asymmetrical so that it can get a little bit of movement in there. And so I need to place this through. It's easy, you can't, you can't get it wrong because the hole on this is bigger than the hole on here. So the bigger part, put my nut down so I don't drop it. So the bigger part has to go through here, okay? So I'm gonna get that lined up over here. There's a little nut that goes on this side and I'm gonna get that tightened up. Okay, so with that connected, I'm just turning where my wheel will be just to make sure everything is still moving freely. And it is, and you can see this little part here going forwards and backwards. That's what I want. That's moving the feed dogs forwards and backwards once the feed dogs are in. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pop them in. This is them. And here's their little screw, which goes through this part of the bracket there. And the threaded part of this screw is gonna go into here on the feed dogs. So let me get them set in here and tightened up. And again, there will be an adjustment made because this hole that this screw goes in is a little bit bigger than the actual thread, okay? And because of that, there's a little play. So if you wanna raise or lower your feed dogs, you can do that a little bit just in this hole by loosening and tightening this screw and moving it up and down. While I'm screwing this in, I'm just kind of holding the upper plate in place up here, it's not screwed on, but just holding it, just to make sure that those feed dogs are somewhat lined up where they need to be. Looks okay for now. Um, I'll pop that back on for real later, but just to make sure that I'm in the ballpark, okay? So let me go ahead and grab the next stack. While I'm working on things here, I'm gonna go ahead and put my little shuttle carrier bracket on. So on, this part here, okay, there's a hole on this little square part that sticks out. That's what this bracket is gonna get screwed to. So I'm just gonna slide it in place. I need to turn it a bit to get it in here. It's hard to do this and hold it up to the camera. Give me one. Okay, I've got it pulled over to the side here. And I'm just gonna drop that screw in and go ahead and get it turned on. Not turned on, screwed in. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see down here, but I have my screw pretty loose, but what I want you to see is it can move a little, it has a little bit of play. When a screw is loose, it has a little play in the hole there, okay? So this, the play that you're gonna be adjusting is gonna be based on the distance of this carrier when the shuttle is in it against this curve here. So that's another adjustment I will be making later. So for right now, I'm just gonna kind of screw it in until later. Okay, so now it's gonna be this connecting bar and it goes with the flat side up. And again, this is another one of those things you can't get wrong because if you try to put the flat side down, it's not gonna fit. 
you know, it's going to be rubbing up against this part of the casting right here. So, you know, flip it around, put the little clampy type screws out so you can get to them. And if I turn the wheel, I can see that it's moving, so that's good. Over here on this side, there is a flat head screw, very short, that looks like this. <gasps> and I just dropped it down the pillar. Let me get that out and I'll screw that in here. And on this side, there is a big shouldered uh, bolt that goes in. Again, it's off center, so things can move, so that's fun. Let me go ahead and get that tightened up. So after that, you want to tighten up these little clampy screws, but not too much that it's going to bind. If they're too tight, it's going to bind and uh, you won't get any movement. So like on this one here, if I really crank on it like this, it's not going to move anywhere. That's not good. So I'm just going to back it off enough until I have movement. And again, on this one, it was just like an eighth of a turn, and that's good. Okay, let me flip her over. I'm putting her wheel back on, and the next thing after the wheel is the little washer with the little prongies going down. Okay, and then the wheel. And there's my little screw. I heard it clink. If there's two ways that that little washer can go in, you know, I'm going to need to polish this again, but I'm just going to show you. If you get it all turned in and get your little screw back on there and get it screwed in, you should be able to turn this center wheel back about a quarter turn and I can turn way more than that. So that means I have that washer on upside down. It's really just a crapshoot, honestly. So I'm taking my screw back out, taking this off. I'm gonna polish it now, but instead of it this way, I'm gonna flip it around this way. So the prongs are still down. I've just rotated it 180 degrees. So let me go ahead and get this polished up, put that on and we'll work on the front. Okay, I want to show you something else. I took my wheel, my wheel is still off. Um, if when you disengage the clutch and like for when you're going to make a bobbin or something and you want to be able to spin your wheel without the needle moving up and down. If that's not happening, there might be something dirty on this part of the bushing here or on this part and mine wasn't and I actually came in and I saw that I had actually a little bit of paint on here that I was not let me clean that up my fingers are very dirty that I had not cleaned off so I came back in here and cleaned off in this area that's going to be up against here and put a couple little drops of oil on there and now that should move freely so I think we're good let me go ahead put the little knob back on. Okay, so back here inside, um, if you remember, this was on with a pin that I did not want to punch out, but I did remove the spring. So I'm going to go ahead and get that spring popped back on to the little nub here so I don't lose it. Make sure it's on there securely. That looks pretty good. And then that will push up against the tension mechanism here. And another thing I'm going to do right now is go ahead and put my lifter lever in here and get it screwed on. And when this lifts, that's what's going to move this little piece here. So it's just a little screw here. Oops, you know what? I still have a little silicone plug in there from uh, when I was painting. Okay. All right, so that is out now. This little plug was still in there. Oops, I thought I got them all out. And now I can go ahead and get this put in. It was not being agreeable, so I'm having to start it with a little screw holder because, yeah, sometimes that happens. All right, so now I can go ahead and cinch in this screw. That's moving all is well. All right. All right, now over here on this side, there's this hole. This 
little bearing here on this thread lifter is going to be traveling up and down in this groove that's on this cog at the end of the main shaft. Probably can't see it. Trust me, take my word for it. So I need to place it so that this eyelet aligns with this screw hole. Let's see if I can do it from this side and that that bearing is going to go into the little slot. Turn the wheel, maybe it'll set in nicely for me. There you go. All right, now there's a big flat screw that's going to go on top here to cinch it in. Okay, so now that is in. See, everything still moving and the lifter lever is definitely lifting. The thread take up lever, I should say. Sorry about that. So now I'm going to start up here with the uh, presser bar and a needle bar. Now, there's an extra bearing here that I have already cleaned that's just going to slide over that post. I wanted to make sure I did not lose that before I get started. Okay, got her set up on my little board. I think I'm going to work on the presser bar first. Now, I have already sprayed in here a lot with my penetrating oil, you know, just to get, don't want it to get on my camera, but that little opening. And trading oils running out so that that can be you know a fairly well coated down there and move around really nicely okay so I did find the washer there was a washer on this it was just stuck or was that another machine I don't know there's so many machines um, what I need to do is this little block here there's a slot on the side and this lifter lever is going to push it up and down okay so i need to get this block in here and when i painted it i made sure that i did not get a lot of paint in that area so that my block has plenty of freedom this is the bottom of my lifter lever that's the top so going to make sure that I have my washer on top. It's fitting actually fairly snugly there. And then the spring underneath that washer. And let's see if I can feed it up from the top through this little spot here. Uh, and it's not going to let me. Okay. Instead, I'm going to feed my bar through just a little bit. Put the washer on it, push it up, put the spring on it, push it up, and then get that set on the top of this little block and feed it through all the way through this hole in the bottom. So with that going through, I'm getting this little plate out one more time and I'm just going to hold it on here. And I want the flat side of this presser bar to be out because that is what my little presser foot is going to clip to. Now this is not my final placement, it's just temporary for right now, but I want to get this presser bar all the way down so that when the lifter lever is down it is up against this plate down here, okay? And that's going to give me a good place to start with this adjustment. All right, so if I call that good just for right now, I'm going to go ahead and get this little screw, little set screw that goes back in this hole and get it tightened up. If I can do this without dropping it, that would be great. Okay, so I'm just going to tighten up that little screw. Okay, so at this point, when I wiggle this, this is moving up, this is moving over. That looks good. Um, I'm just going to, no, I'm not going to put my presser foot on yet, but I am going to screw this finial in up at the top here just to keep it all together. Uh, what this is for is putting more pressure on your presser foot. So the farther you screw your finial down, the more pressure is going to be on that presser foot. And I'm not sure why this is not sliding back down. I think I need to make an adjustment over here. You know, I think that you would think I would learn every time I do one of these machines, 
this block needs to be put on before this is in okay this is what goes over this it's got a little track here that I put oil in already um, but I cannot slide it under there because that presser bar is going to lay in this slot so again pretend I haven't done this yet I'm going to go slide this in there's a slot over in the casting on this side that this goes into okay and then I'll be right back okay so now that that is in I'm sliding the needle bar down and on the needle bar you'll see a hole it's larger on one side smaller on the other side so I'm going to line up this larger hole with this center one here. Let's see, the larger side of it. And put my, let's see, this screw actually goes on this side, the bigger one over here. And where's my other screw? Hold on one sec. Okay. And I'm going to get this other smaller screw and put it in right here. Okay, so this one, the bigger one, that's like the clamp that holds it all together. This one is the one that's actually attaching it to the needle bar. So once I have that in, is everything moving? Put that stuff under there, and yes, it is moving the way I want it to. I don't know why my camera's acting weird. So I'm going to go ahead and um, just put all the little minor attachments down here, the little uh, thread clamp, presser foot, all of that kind of stuff back on on the bottoms. Yeah, I know I have dirty, greasy handprints all over her. I am going to give her a nice cleaning before I uh, call it all good. But I wanted to show you to put this thread guide on. It's a lot easier if you can let gravity help you along and uh, set your machine back up right this way actually i'm gonna use my little screw head grabber thingy because it's just a little bit persnickety to get right in here okay so at this point i've got most of it of the main parts put in i'm going to go ahead and take a break i think this is a good spot to um, go back in the house and I'll be out here later on to hopefully get her finished, get her timed up, and see if she's going to sew. All right, it's been a little bit, and uh, as you can maybe see, I did put her medallion back on. This one is kind of odd. When I polished it up, sometimes they are brass, sometimes they're copper. And this one, it looked like it was, it looked like it was tin painted with a copper or something because it's a very pinkish kind of look when I'm done which matches with the machine perfectly so there's nothing wrong with that um, I have put the bobbin winder back together you know um, I've shown that before and honestly I just didn't feel like turning a camera on while I was doing it so I got that together it's gonna sit right here so I need to get that screwed on you want to make sure that the tire is going to engage against the part of the wheel that's right here and it does so let me go ahead and get this big screw and put it in there okay I'm gonna go ahead and put the shuttle in as you can see she's all cleaned up I don't have the bobbin in right now but that's okay so if I set it in here I can see this is a little too close to the edge um, I'm going to need to adjust it. So there's that screw where I, uh, I attach this. Remember I showed earlier that it can move back and forth. I'm going to push it back this way a little bit before I put this in. All right, so now it seems to be moving pretty well. What I want is for this flat part of the shuttle to just kind of skim along the edge. The flat part of this kind of rides it like that, okay? So we want it close enough that it can engage with the needle, but not so close that it's going to bind. Sorry about that. Bumping the camera. And I think that we are good. Okay, so before I get started, I'm going to get this little bracket put on. It has a little screw here that's going to go on, and I'm going to set it about midway. If I need to change that later, I can. 
All right, so when I am screwing my post in here, I put my little nut towards the end so that I can use my screwdriver out here and it won't spread anything apart. And I'm taking my spring down towards the bottom and I'm gonna screw it in as tight as I can with my spring down here at the bottom and then let it come up into this area, this cutout area. So that way it's gonna bounce down like I want it to. Okay, so now I can undo this nut here and put my discs on, one disc curving out, the next disc curving in, little bracket here, little beehive spring there, and to finish it off, the nut here at the end. Just like that. Now when I lift my tension release, there we go. I don't know if you can see. It's not really doing a whole lot up there, and I want to know why. There it goes. Okay, can you just see that little bit of movement there? Uh, right there. I feel like that teacher on The Incredibles trying to show when Dash is moving. But it's just enough to push this spring out so that there's no tension in those discs. Okay? So that's working. That's good. All right, I've got our front plate pretty clean. I'm going to go ahead and get it put on because it has the little thread guide up at the top, so we can't test it out until that front plate is on. I need to tell you, when I was putting this together, um, connecting the bobbin winder to the belt guard, this part in here, even though there's one of those little washer-type springs in there, it was not doing its job. And to me, I want this piece to be able to go up, hold its place, and come down and hold its place. And it was not. It was flapping no matter what. I don't know if the spring was worn out or what. So what I did is, in addition to that little washer-shaped spring, I cut just a tiny bit of actually this mat that I have on my table. It's like the stuff that they put in toolbox um, drawers or non-skid stuff under rugs. I cut just a little bit of that, slid it over the uh, bolt and tightened it up and in addition to that little, again, washer shaped spring. And now that's enough to hold it in place. So I know it's an unorthodox fix, but it worked for me. Hello, good morning, and welcome to the next day. So I'm still working on this bobbin winder. Um, there was a couple things. First, I think I had some teeth that weren't completely cleared out and it was getting bogged down. But I wanted to mention one thing. This screw here, it's one of these screws that has a different amount of gap. Well, is this the right one? No, this is a different screw. But anyway, this screw on this model has a different amount of gap on each side. The post is not centered. And so that's how you make the adjustment if you need your little cog farther or closer to your threads. <clears throat> but once you figure out that distance, you really need to cinch it in with the, the little back nut because this screw cannot be moving while this is turning. If this is turning and you see this screw turning, um, that's not going to work for you because as it turns, it's going to cinch things up. You know what I mean? But anyway, while I was taking this apart and I have two different springs, I realized another thing that I did wrong. These springs are different sizes. The one that is in here is slightly, slightly smaller than this one. And I think that might have been my problem with it wanting to droop up here. So I've switched them out. I have my bigger one here and I'm hoping that when I attach it to this, that that slightly bigger spring is going to be enough to make up the difference to keep this wanting to flop down. So I'll let you know in just a minute, but I wanted to point that out that uh, once you figure out the placement of this, make sure that you tighten it up and everything should be good. Okay, so I just put a little bit of thread on her bobbin. I didn't actually wind it, and I'm just using a little bobbin up there. And I did just, you know, off camera check to see if she sews. She does sew, but 
Her feed dogs are not up. I completely forgot about adjusting those up. <clears throat> so I need to flip her upside down and get those feed dogs raised up because right now they're not, they're level with the plates, so they're not doing anything. So let me get that flipped around. Down here, um, this little screw that the feed dogs are attached to, I just loosened it up a bit, pushed the whole thing up and tightened it back up. And now I can see that they are above the surface. So I think we're good. Okay, so at this point, um, she is going to be motorized. She does have a place to mount over here, and I have just an aftermarket little white one amp motor and foot pedal. I have tested it before, and I know it does work, so I am just going to mount this on back here. I have the little bolt that comes with it. It should fit. Let me get that set up. So back here, just kind of kind of straddle this. I'm going to put my bolt on, and then you can raise or lower this depending once I get my belt on, you know, and I need to adjust it to fit my belt. I can do that. So what I did is I just pulled my whole wheel off, found a belt that looks like it's going to fit. I just have a little cleated belt on here. And at this point, I don't have it super tight. Um, I have plenty of room. I can lower my motor. But I want to make sure that even at this height I can turn it. That means that it's not going to be too small. So that is good. I'm going to go ahead and put my um, washer and my little clutch releasing knob thing whoops, back on. And actually, it's easier to do this if I tip the machine up on her nose so I have gravity working with me. Like so. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've got her plugged in and uh, not threaded right now. And I just want to make sure. I'm just going to squeeze this a little bit and see how she does. Ooh, lots of power. She is bouncing a little bit. I'm going to open this up and see what it looks like inside. See what that shuttle is doing. I don't want to really crank it, so I want to be able to see what's going on. Oops, my clutch knob was loose. All right, let's try this again. Well, she's got plenty of power. Let me go ahead and stick a paper towel under here with some thread and see what kind of stitches we could make. Wow, that's pretty slick. Okay, let me adjust the stitch length. Well, I think she's working great. The stitch length is definitely changing the length of stitch. Um, I need to wrap a new bobbin down there. But, you know, it was just a dirty little thread that was under there. It looks like I need to adjust my tension because I have a issue right there. I did put a new needle in her. This is the back with my ugly little thread and tiny stitches up to longer stitches. Um, yeah, it looks like my upper thread is a little too tight, so I'm just going to loosen that a bit. I think there, my beehive spring was a little off center. Okay, let me try it just one more time. See if that does the trick. Oops, I am out of thread in my bobbin. Okay, let me go ahead and see how the new bobbin winder work. Okay, let's see here. Looks like I do need to put my finger there to hold it up against the little wheel. Oops, I just lost my bobbin that was my thread up there. But you can see the arm is going back and forth, so that's good. I think I have enough thread on here to go ahead and test it out. But yeah, when you're using it, just a little bit of pressure that way. But then when you're not using it, just pull it forward a little bit so that wheel right here disengages. Okay, but when I am using it, push it up. Okay, let me go ahead and pop this back in here and when you load it um, bring the thread around in front over to the right and slide it down and then there's a little uh, crevice or a little slit right there the thread comes down and then you pull it back up 
and it's going to snap behind here. Okay, so my thread's over in that area now. And then come over here, and I'm going to bring, just tightening up that knob, bringing the little shuttle carrier to the front with this part going along here, popping it in place. And I need to get my needle threaded. I'm just going to pop that bobbin back up there and go ahead and thread the needle. So let me get everything through its little wire loop right here. <clears> Through <throat> the thread take up lever. I'm going to snap it through this little eyelet in the front. Okay, there's a thread guide right there, and then it threads from the outside to the inside in this needle right here. Once that is done, I'm just going to do a little cycle here and make sure that my thread is picking up the bobbin. Pull it out. Okay. Alrighty, let's try this one more time. I think that looks good. Yeah, the tension is perfectly balanced now. Let me pull it out so we can see. And it pulls out easily. But see, here's my back bobbins. And sewing on a paper towel, it's not perfect, but you know, you get the idea. Plus, if you sew on a paper towel first, any little residual oils are going to come off. So I think she is done. I'm going to go ahead and put her little plates back on here and on the back, get her cleaned up, and she's going to be ready to go to her new home. Simple living's valued, she'd be loved and understood. I put her on a treadle stand and coaxed her wheel to turn. I felt her joy and easing with my study and concern. I cleaned her and I owed her, showed her off to all my friends, repaired the hurts of years of yours. Let her sew again. 